Saving data, what's a safe way to do it? Well, if you answered user defaults, give yourself a prize for not getting it right. <laughs> hey there, this is Brian. And in this video, we'll take a look at saving data from in-app purchases in a way that is secure. But before we dive in, if you like these kinds of tutorials and you wanna be notified when new ones are being added to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and then tap that notification bell. We would certainly appreciate it. Okay, when you receive a transaction for a purchase product, a good thing to do is save the purchase locally. That way you won't need to contact the app store every time a user starts your app. Now iOS contains a lot of ways to save data. In fact, we have a complete course on raywindelick.com, which you should definitely check out in case you really aren't up to speed with all these different ways. Well, we don't need a large framework like core data to store a small amount of information. For instance, let's say we had a game that used gems as currency. When a user buys more gems, we just need to store that number someplace. So why not use user defaults? I mean, it's a perfect for this kind of information. The reason not to use it is because it's not secure. It's simply a text file. If a user jailbreaks their device, they can essentially modify the file to give themselves as many gems as they want. A better solution is to use the keychain. The keychain is a database designed for storing metadata and sensitive information in a secure manner. In this sample app, we're going to use the keychain, but we're gonna be using a third party library called Keychain Wrapper. This dependency makes the keychain work just like user defaults, so we get the convenience of user defaults with the security of the keychain. All right, there is a downside, of course, being that we're adding an additional dependency into our app, which may introduce problems down the road. At this point, we've purchased a product and then we received a transaction back. And we store that information in memory, but if the app closes, essentially what happens is we'll need a new transaction to check to see if that user purchased that product. So what we wanna do is save it. And there's a good library called Keychain Wrapper. And it works very much like user defaults. So what we're gonna do is install this library by way of CocoaPods. If you aren't familiar with CocoaPods, there's lots of tutorials on the internet. Definitely check out our tutorial on CocoaPods at raywinderlich.com. I'm not gonna be showing you how to install it, but it is a vital tool if you're doing any sort of iOS development. So the first thing I'm gonna do here with my project open is I'm gonna close it. And now you'll see I have my terminal up and running. I'm gonna CD into the desktop and then I'm going to CD into my project. CD just means change directory. All right, now let's check to see we're in the right location. Now we'll clear that out and I'm going to initialize my pod file. So I'll just simply type pod init. And that gets everything going. Now it's time to edit my pod file. So I'm just gonna be using Vim. You can use any sort of text editor that you want. So I'm gonna scroll down here or arrow down here. I'm gonna press I for insert. And now I'm going to add the pod for my Swift keychain wrapper. Okay, now I'm gonna hit escape and then colon W for write. So that will save the data. Now I'm gonna hit colon Q and I escape out of it and I'm back at the console. So I have my pod already set up. Now I can just simply type pod install and that's gonna download the Swift Keychain wrapper and integrate it with my project. Okay, we have that all set. I can close this out now and I'll open up my project here and I can see that it's working or that it installed because we now have a workspace. So we're gonna open that. When working with CocoaPods, we always work with workspaces as opposed to projects. Okay, here's my pods. And you can see if I, you can see we have the Swift keychain wrapper like so. So I'm gonna open up my main project here and let's add this into appdelegate.swift. So we'll scroll down here and we wanna import it. So we'll import the Swift keychain wrapper and we'll scroll on down here and let's look in for let's look for complete transaction. Now all I want to do is save the identifier into my keychain. So what we can do here is we know that the person's bought it. So we simply type keychain. You see we have keychain wrapper. We're going to do standard and then using set. 
and we're going to set a value and the value is going to be true and we're going to pass in a key and the key is simply going to be a transaction payment product identifier You'll see here that we have the ease of use of working with user defaults, but we also have the security of working with our keychain. So that saves the products. Now we have to load them in. I'm going to do that with in-app purchase helper. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to jump over to iaphelper.swift and let's add the following. You'll see here we have our purchased products right here. So we want to read this back in. Okay, so here we are in iaphelper.swift and we want to read our products back in. So we're going to do this in our initializer. So here we have our product identifiers. Underneath here, let's set up our purchase products. And we'll create a set from our product IDs. And we're going to run a simple filter on them. Now, before we do this, we need to import our keychain wrapper. Then if we scroll down here, we're going to be looking for our keychain wrapper standard. And then we're looking for bool for key. And we're simply going to pass in dollar sign zero. So essentially what happens here is we'll loop through these product IDs by using the filter function. And essentially, if the ID is contained within the key wrapper, then this will be true. We own that product. Otherwise, it will be false and that will not be added to the purchase products. As you can see, we can get the ease of use of user defaults and the security of the keychain with this simple library. What secure ways do you save data in your app? Definitely let us know in the comments below and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.